Well, let's look at the scriptural proof concerning Israel's future. Verses 25 through 36 in Romans chapter 11. In verses 25 through 36, Paul again and again uses use the Old Testament in the three chapters we've covered, to sh that is chapters 9 through 11, to show us Israel's past, chapter 9, Israel's present, chapter 10, and now Israel's future in chapter 11. Now in this final section of chapter 11, verses 25 through 39, he turns to Psalms 14 and 7 and Isaiah 59, 20 to show that the Old Testament promise a coming deliverer would, who would cleanse and restore Israel. Now this unchangeable promise to the nation was the basis for Paul's reassurance of the future salvation here in verses 25 through 27. He states in verse 25, the mystery of Israel's blindness, the, the mystery being the truth hidden in the past ages. Hidden where? Where was it hidden? It was hidden in the Old Testament, but now revealed in the fullness of the New Testament. The fullness, the, the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, he says. This refers to the number of Gentiles that will be saved during the church age when the body of Christ is completed. Israel's spiritual hardening, which began with the rejection of Jesus, the Messiah, will last until the complete number of Gentiles has come to salvation. Paul quotes in verse 26, Psalms 14, 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores his captive people. Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. In verse 27, this new covenant that he refers to uh, the new covenant prophesied by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 59 reads, a redeemer will come. The Messiah, the suffering servant will redeem Zion and all faithful Israel. This is my covenant forever. God's new covenant is everlasting. When, when and only when it trusts in Christ. Will this new covenant apply to Israel? It may seem like the Jews are enemies of God's will today, but they're still beloved in God's sight because of the covenant he made with their fathers in verse 29. He said it this way, God's gift, God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Men may change. But the word of God will not change. Isaiah puts it this way. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God stands forever. So let's move down to verses 30 through 32 and read those. Romans chapter 11, verses 30 through 32. For just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience. So these also now have been disobedient that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all. Paul explains in this final paragraph of this section of chapter 9 through 11 that the Gentiles at one time rejected God. And we read that back in Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 18 and following. Yet now they will be saved. How? By faith. So today the Jews are in unbelief, but will one day receive mercy. God will extend his grace to unbelieving Israel as he did 
to unbelieving Gentiles. And we read that back in Romans chapter five, verse eight. Now I want you to listen to me carefully. Salvation, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, flows from God's mercy. God had committed both Jews and Gentiles to unbelief and sin that he might be able to save both through, verse 32, grace. After reviewing God's wise plan for both Jews and Gentiles, it is, is it any wonder Paul closes, he closes out this section with a hymn of praise to the Lord in verses 33 through 36. And let's read that together. Verses 33 through 36. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? And who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. And it ends with all glory to him forever. Amen. The next time, chapter 12.